Imagine if your passion could help conservation and support tropical communities in their pursuit of sustainability. I fell in love with birds when I held this tourmaline sun angel, my spark bird, back in 2004, and I've never looked back. As an ecologist, a researcher, and an avid bird watcher, I seek conservation solutions that benefit both birds and people. Wait, do you guys hear that? That is a Cundinamarca and Pitta. This is a bird Jose knows a lot about. He lives with his family in a small piece of land on the eastern Andes of Colombia. He often hunts in the, in the forest for wildlife to secure protein for his family and sell the surplus in the nearby town. Because his family is fully dependent on him, he found a supplemented job carrying sacks of cement in the nearest town, which is about two hours away by motorcycle. One day, Jose was returning from his morning hunt when he ran across a foreign-looking couple. Peter, who was tall, blue-eyed, and dressed in full khaki, had his binoculars raised, looking at the top of the trees, where his wife, Mary, was describing all of the birds that they were both enjoying in that mixed species flock. Jose thought those people were weird. Mind you, it's not common to find foreigners just walking around in rural roads in Colombia. But he was curious about what they were doing in his forest, and so he asked them. In their slightly broken Spanish, Peter and Mary let Jose know that they were bird watching or searching for birds for fun. Jose thought that was even weirder. <laughs> que gringos tan locos! <laughs> like, who has the luxury to look for birds for fun when you have to feed your family? Peter and Mary were also curious about Jose and wondered if maybe he knew where to find the bird that they are looking for. They asked Jose if he had ever seen a Cundinamarca antpita one of the world's rarest and most endangered birds. Since Jose did not react to this complicated name, Mary quickly took out her field guide and showed him the picture. Ah, see, si, said Jose upon seeing the illustration. He immediately recognized it as the bird that he calls the tororoi, a chubby, football-sized bird with long legs that often follows him around in the forest while he hunts. Upon seeing his reaction, Peter and Mary realize that Jose knows where to find the bird they're looking for, and so they ask him to lead them to it. Jose drops his um, daily activities and asks Peter and Mary to follow him to the exact spot where he recently opened a hunting trail, and the tororoi is eating worms off the newly opened path. Peter and Mary can't believe their eyes. They're so excited. You can't believe how excited birders get when they get their target bird. <clears throat> they jump and high five Jose. When they part ways, they give Jose a tip for showing them the bird. Now, Jose can't believe his eyes when he realizes the tip he just got is worth about two weeks of labor at the construction site. Jose realizes there and then that his knowledge of forest creatures and where to find them is valuable beyond hunting. He wonders if there are other birds, like the tororoi, that are in this forest, and if other foreigners, like Peter and Mary, will come to see them. <clears throat> but what was so special about the Cundinamarca and Pita? It isn't that colorful anyway. Why were Peter and Mary so excited? The Cundinamarca and Pitta is a species endemic to the eastern Andes of Colombia and found nowhere else on Earth. Due to its restricted distribution and threats to its habitat, it's classified as an endangered species. 
or one that is inching closer to extinction every day. The Cundinamarca antpita is one of about 1,200 species of birds threatened with extinction globally. Most of these birds are found in tropical developing countries like Colombia. But even here in the US, we've seen a 30% decline of bird populations since the 1970s. Many of the activities that threaten bird survival, like habitat loss, the illegal pet trade, and climate change, are the result of unsustainable resource extraction in the global north, yet their impacts are deeply felt in the global south. The global challenge then is to conserve this vast bird diversity in tropical countries where people often suffer from extreme poverty, the demand for resource extraction is highest, and conservation resources are scarce. Simply put, we can't expect tropical communities to conserve birds and their habitats while they experience hunger and unemployment. This is where birdwatching tourism comes in. Birdwatching tourism is the activity of traveling in search of birds. Birdwatchers like myself, and maybe some of you in the audience are listening, seek the thrill of seeing a new species. We love our life lists. And we also enjoy the beauty of songbird and color. In this pursuit, we are keen to visit tropical regions. As any type of tourism, birdwatching tourism is a profitable business. People would pay big money to see the birds they're looking for, needing specialized infrastructure and guides, as well as basic services, such as food, transportation, and lodging. It is a sustainable form of tourism that is low impact, because it is done in small groups and involves observers taking in nature in silence. Birdwatchers are generally highly educated and have a heightened environmental awareness. Importantly for people like myself, birdwatching tourism requires conservation of bird habitats and populations to succeed. Bird guides must be able to show target birds to birdwatchers, meaning that healthy bird populations are indispensable for a profitable business. A few characteristics make birdwatching tourism a real economic alternative in tropical countries and particularly for rural communities. This type of tourism has the potential to be highly decentralized and support local economies. It brings revenue to places that are not traditional tourist destinations, but are desirable because of their birds. Lastly, and my personal favorite, birdwatching tourism places economic value on traditional ecological knowledge, like the one Jose had about where to find that tororoi. This type of knowledge is not acquired in a classroom or through a degree and has little economic potential in our conventional economy, yet it is indispensable for a thriving birdwatching tourism operation. Importantly, bird guides report improved quality of life as they trade physically demanding jobs for guiding birdwatchers, like Jose, who traded hunting and construction work for bird guiding. Now, Last time I saw Jose, he was leading a group of 12 khaki-wearing foreign tourists. <laughs> they were all sporting big fancy binoculars and large camera lenses and wide smiles. Jose is now a local guide renowned for his ability to spot and identify birds. His family runs a small birdwatching lodge where tourists can be immersed in local culture, consume traditional food, and buy artisanal souvenirs. This business employs family members and local residents and has drastically changed Jose's life and his family's finances. This financial stability means that they can thrive without leaving their home. Importantly, Jose feels valued for his knowledge of birds and is now committed to conserving the forest around him. He traded his shotgun for a pair of binoculars. Imagine if your passion could help support conservation of tropical ecosystems and species. When traveling as ecotourists, you can choose to support local economies by booking directly with local guides and agencies, appropriately compensating their services, and generously supporting their conservation efforts. Birds connect our northern and southern hemispheres through their annual migratory journeys, transcending physical, cultural, and political barriers. 
it is time for us to bridge our differences and rise together to protect our feathered gems. Where are you guys traveling to next? Jose and his friends are waiting for you.